to be my own guest today, <laughs> which I thought I think is fabulous. You probably want to know uh, who I am and uh, why you should listen to me talk to you about better love and sex, what gives me the authority to do so, so to speak. So I'm going to share my bio with you and um, share my, my personal journey. This is really, um, it's very poignant for me because... Um, I I began this journey in in such an unhealed and disconnected place and my journey of sexual awakening it was it was so transformative in in every area of my life and it was so unexpected I had no idea that there was so much emotional energy wrapped up in, in, in human sexuality. And I had no idea that there was so much of my personal potential that had been bound up and was lying dormant as a result of, um, of wounding, you know, not just around sexuality, but just around life in general. And, and, and it was um, amazing that when I began to awaken to my full potential for sexual pleasure and become fully sexually expressive and what I mean by fully sexually expressive I mean absolutely fearless about about asking for what I want absolutely fearless about communicating to my partner about what's bringing me pleasure what isn't bringing me pleasure you know what could bring me more pleasure um, fearless about about confronting those areas that were um, repressed and those areas that were wounded and, and being willing to look at my inner demons, so to speak. Um, it, the transformation that, that occurred, how that affected the way I related to life, the way I related to other human beings, the way I related to work, um, it, it, it was so amazing and it was such a transformation and such a huge awakening and and I've just seen this happen for so many men and women um, over the years and so I just feel really passionately about about sharing this information and sharing tools for all of us as a species to become more healed and more whole and more integrated with our sexuality so that we can be more healthy and happy and fully expressed as human beings so we can express more of our human potential and and love and connection and happiness and all those wonderful things that make life worth living so that that's that's my vision and and my goal so um how did i get to where i am today uh and where i am today i am a certified tantric healer um, certified authentic tantra educator, the the co-founder actually of Authentic Tantra, which is a unique uh, lineage-based style of tantra. And for those of you that don't really know what that means, uh, we will be exploring uh, tantra, uh, different styles of tantra, authentic tantra specifically. Uh, in future shows, I'm actually going to have my co-founder join me to to explain more about the the details of the different styles of Tantra and what may, makes each style unique. Um, and I am the author of this amazing book called Shake Your Soul Song, A Woman's Guide to Self-Empowerment Through the Art of Self-Pleasure. And the book is about how we can cultivate pleasure in all areas of our life. And the more attuned and connected we are to our bodies and how they, um, the wisdom and kind of the, the guidance that they give us in the form of sensations, particularly ple pleasurable sensations, the more we're able to align with our, um, our true purpose and our soul calling. Um, and, and just what's, what's actually right for us. Um, so that is, that's me. That's, those are my, that's my pedigree. <laughs> credentials <laughs> in a nutshell <laughs> and so how did I how did I get into this line of work that's a common question I get that from a lot of people how did you get into this you know sex education and sex healing and Tantra specifically and I, and I would like to share that for me it was completely off my radar like I, I had no idea <laughs> no idea that this is what I would be doing um, 
I had very little, I, I, w I was not sexually awakened in any way when I began practicing Tantra. In fact, I, I share with people that I was, I was mostly non-orgasmic, um, you know, was terrified of communicating. I thought sex lasted two to seven minutes and, you know, if it happened to last longer, good. Um, didn't have orgasms with, with during penetration, uh, didn't have orgasms during oral sex because I didn't want them down there long enough to, <laughs> I felt, just felt really embarrassed. Um, so I was not this sexually empowered being like throughout my whole life. I was actually very, very sexually wounded. Um, and had been sexually, uh, abused as a child that I was, I was unaware of that for most of my life. Um, so Tantra was not something that I was looking for <laughs> and sexual healing. I did, wouldn't even, I didn't even know what that meant. I had no frame of reference for that. But the way Tantra was presented to me was as a path of spiritual realization. And for me, that, that piqued my interest. I was very curious about that because up until that point, I had been a monk of the Ashaya order. In uh, 1999, actually, I took vows and devoted my life to my spiritual path. And I wore only white for several years, I think four or five years consistently. And I taught the Ashaya's Ascension Meditation uh, throughout the United States in several different places and um, was part of this organization. Um, and I was very, very committed to my spiritual practice and very committed to my spiritual path in life. That was first and foremost for me. Um, at the time that I began practicing Tantra, I was not an active monk. I was still doing the practice and still uh, doing the meditation on a regular basis, but I was not actively participating in the organization. Uh, just to clarify that. So this idea that you could use sexual energy to somehow realize enlightenment or, you know, more consciousness or whatever you want to call it, spiritual realization, I, that I was like, wow, really? <laughs> That sounded, that sounded pretty interesting because I had done everything except for that. You know, I had, I had done raw foods and I had done fasting and I did crystal healing and I had pretty much done every new age thing you can possibly do to, uh, to just have some inner peace and happiness and feel, not be plagued, you know, by my thought streams and my inner demons um, and to heal, to be a healthy whole uh, human being, um, which can be a lifelong path for many of us. And, um, but I, I hadn't heard of the, of, of using sexuality to do that. So, so that is what drew me. Um, I like to really clarify that because for many people, the uh, Tantra is about uh, enhancing sexuality and, and it absolutely does. It's, it's a kind of like a byproduct of the practice. Um, but at the time, if my partner had intro had said, "Hey, you want to learn how to have better sex?" I, I would have been like, "Yeah, no, whatever, I'm fine." <laughs> you know, what I mean, I didn't know I was sexually closed down, but I knew I didn't, you know, I, I, whatever. I thought I was good. So it being a uh, offered to me as a tool for personal transformation and personal growth is really what hooked me. What actually occurred and why I really like to share so much about the sexuality of it is that it was through the sexual healing and the sexual pleasure and power and orgasm and amazing experiences of Tantra that, um, that so much of my growth occurred. I believe that sexuality is one of the areas that we are most wounded, uh, not just as individuals, but as a species. I mean, if you think of, you know, you can't even say this word sex in some places or orgasm is a dirty word. And it's so sad, you know, how, it's so sad how, how we're so afraid to talk to each other about something so basic and so fundamental. And to me, if we're afraid to talk about it, um, you know, or if we feel fear and guilt and shame, well, that's, that's a sign of wounding. So we need to heal. So the key, <laughs> the key to having better love and sex is to find out what's in the way of us having that right now. What's blocking us from having this full, fully free, amazing, orgasmic, incredible experience. What's in the way of that? And, and finding ways to transform that and dissolve that and, and release that. 
Um, and so that's what that's ideally what the show is is about is is helping you find ways, uh, uh, helping us all find ways. So um, more about me. So I began this journey of of sexual healing. And um, the key for me, so I was very curious, and I think I think you should know this. So there is the saying that that you know, sex can lead to realization, but I, nobody ever told me how. And I'm very practical. I want to know how. Like, give me the. I just want to do it. So the way it was explained, and this is part of the Tibetan Tantric lineage, I haven't actually heard this instruction in any other lineage of Tantra, I could be incorrect, but this is the way it came through to me, through the Tibetan Tantric lineage. The key is that at the moment of orgasm, the moving energies in the genitals, and we'll talk more about the mechanics of this when we have Jacques Druin on the show, my, my co-founder. But for now, think of moving energies as, as wind. It's just moving energy as wind. So you know, like the, you, you, the energy in the genitals, it begins to rise. You know, there's all these different levels and layers of arousal. So as the energy begins to move, at the moment of orgasm, the wind energy, the moving energy, brushes the central channel. Now, for from an esoteric standpoint, the central channel is the core of the life force in the body. It's an energetic channel. For those of you who are aware of acupuncture and meridians and that sort of thing, the central channel is like the trunk of the tree, and then everything else branches out from that. So at the moment of orgasm, the moving energies brush the central channel, and we get a glimpse of enlightenment. So if you think of that moment of orgasm, and it's just bliss, you know, oftentimes it's like it's over before it even began. <laughs> it's boom, it's there, it's gone. But what if, instead of it being a, a sneeze, <laughs> what if that moment of orgasm could be extended and expanded so that instead of a tiny point, it became an entire field of pleasure? What if instead of having a two-second orgasm, you could have a 10-second orgasm or a 30-second orgasm or a 60-second orgasm or an orgasm that lasted for two and a half, four, five minutes? What if you lost all sense of time because you were just suspended, held, resting, aware in this space of pure bliss and pleasure? Wow. So... That is enlightenment, that freedom, that pure joy, that no mind, that no sense of self. In the moment of orgasm, there's no I, there's no sense of self. It's just pure bliss and pure joy. So human, so you think, you know, I mean, we can all have orgasms. They may not be five-minute orgasms, but they're orgasms, right? So the beauty of human sexuality is that we are literally designed so that sex, sexual pleasure and orgasm gives us a direct experience of our true nature, of enlightened mind. Wow, it's part of our hardwiring of the human design. That is, I think that's the best kept secret in the world. So, um... So that, that is, that is the, the beauty and the mechanics of how sex relates to your spiritual growth. And I think everybody should know that. Believe, not believe. But my experience was it completely transformed my life. So apparently we have a caller, which is awesome. I'm sorry, Davey. The caller just dropped. She was on a oh. cell phone, so I think she went out of zone. But you do have the question, so if you're more than welcome to answer her question so that she can... Uh, hear it on the radio anyways, and if you're listening there, well, obviously, clearly she's listening, but if you feel like you need to call back, uh, Dale, go ahead and call back. Yeah, absolutely. If you can call back, call back. But I'll go ahead and answer your question. So how do you build your vaginal muscles? So um, there's there's a lot of, there's quite a few different techniques. Obviously, there's your basic Kegel uh, methods, um, which are, it's a series of uh, using your breath, inhaling, and contracting the PC muscles. Um, I really like to give advanced instructions. Uh, what I learned in my study is that if you put something in the vagina, when you do these exercises, you're going to get a much deeper and much more powerful contraction. It's kind of like, you know, you have to give it something to squeeze around. Um, so 
my opinion, and there's there's a few different products out on the market for this sort of thing, and it, and it depends on if you've had children or not, you know. Um, that's going to depend on the size of the product that you use. So um, I know Lalo Toys makes makes um, some their balls, basically Benoit balls, or um, some sort of a, a weight, vaginal weight lifting. I I really recommend uh, using a jade egg or jade Benoit balls. Um, jade, it's it's like gem therapy for your for your sexual organs. Jade is a traditional Taoist. Um, medicine uh, practice um, tool, I guess, uh, for for not only developing the strength of the muscles in the vagina, but also healing, also healing and helping to balance. Actually, it's, it's recommended for menopausal women to help them uh, begin relubricating uh, their, their vaginas naturally. Um, so a cure for vaginal dryness, but it, you know you don't have to suffer from vaginal dryness, obviously, to get the benefits of these these exercises. So the idea behind it really is that you know what happens with any muscle that you exercise? Well, it, it becomes healthier. <laughs> it becomes healthier. It becomes stronger. You increase blood flow. You increase circulation. So to that area of the body. So when you develop a regular practice of doing uh, vaginal uh, jade Benoit ball exercises or jade egg exercises exercises, um, you begin increasing and enriching the health of your sexual organs. You know, we, we talk about exercising every other area of our body, but not our sexual organs. And um, I think that's absolutely very important. Uh, also, the stronger those muscles are, the deeper and more powerful your orgasms, the easier you're able to orgasm, uh, because orgasm initially is a, a cr- contraction, involuntary muscle contractions, uh, release of energy, re- release of tension. That's the most base definition of orgasm. So how you do them um, is, uh, well, there, there's different resources. There's different books on the subject. Uh, I, in my book, Shake Your Soul Song, I actually have specific Jade Ben Wall exercises, and I give you the, you know, break it down for you in, in the series of one, two, three, you know, A, B, C, one, two, three, how do you do it? So um, so that's the why, the how. I, I recommend um, uh, buying a book or, or doing getting some coaching from somebody um, to actually learn the basic mechanics or watch a YouTube video. I think it's on YouTube too. Um, so, uh, so moving on. So speaking of orgasm and pleasure and uh, all these amazing things. So one of the things I when I when I started becoming multi orgasmic, I was amazed at what my body could do. I. And I was I was really pissed off that nobody had told me that that there was so much more to sexuality than than we than we learn. Uh, you know, our sex education in this culture isn't actually sex education. It's just you know basic anatomy and how to not get pregnant, pretty much, and where do babies come from. But to actually learn, um, you know, methods for cultivating pleasure, we have no pleasure education. And so, for most of us, conventionally, our sexual experiences are very very, you know, they're very minimal compared to our full potential as human beings. And so when I began tasting and exploring my full potential, I was blown away because I thought orgasm was like, you know, your clitoris and then it's done and you can only have one and, you know, kind of like a guy and that's it. You roll over and go to sleep. I had no idea where my G spot was initially. I had no idea what an A spot was. You know, I had no idea that that there was basically, you know, the symphony of pleasure that could be experienced um, through prolonged sexual connection, prolonged sexual pleasure. So as part of my research <laughs> as an educator, I began um, defining uh, these different flavors of orgasm. But, um, you know, and I also found that it's, I, I wasn't the only one, so that there are already definitions out there. And so um, there, are, there are actually over 11 different kinds of orgasm. There's so, so much more uh, every day being uh, discovered in the realm of human sexuality, and I think it's it's just amazing, and it's a fascinating study. So at the time I wrote the book, I was aware of eleven orgasms, but there's actually more. There's over eleven different kinds of orgasms. So I'm going to share with you what they are, 
and um, and and a few uh, different ways that they may be experienced. So for many women, and these are the eleven different or over eleven different orgasms for women. Men, you guys are capable of having at least six to eight different kinds of orgasm. Ejaculatory orgasms are only one kind of orgasm, and actually, for you guys, orgasm and ejaculation are two separate functions of the nervous system, and you can learn how to separate those so that you can have multiple non ejaculatory orgasms. In a couple weeks, we're going to actually have Jacques Druin, uh, the co-founder of Authentic Tantra, on, and we're going to talk about healing, how you can heal premature ejaculation and erectile dysfunction using some of these tantric methods um, and, you know, and becoming multi-orgasmic to boot. Um, but for women... We are, uh, most women are familiar with having a clitoral orgasm and clitoral orgasms are, uh, you know, they, they're usually somewhat short and, and explosive and, and many women, you know, can have one clitoral orgasm and then it gets, it gets real sensitive and then perhaps can have more clitoral orgasms after, um, we can also have G-spot orgasms. There is such a thing as a G-spot. Most people are aware of this at this point, but you know, in case you're not aware of your G-spot or where it is, your G-spot is located in within the first about an inch and a half to two inches inside your vagina on the anterior wall. So if you took your middle finger right now and you're sitting down and you put it, you know, palm facing you in your I'm going to say Yoni. I'm just going to say it for all these shows. So Yoni is, is a Sanskrit word for the, for the uh, Sanskrit name for the word vagina. Yoni means sacred space. Vagina is just, it's such a, it's such a clunky word. It's just not, it's not a sexy word. <laughs> so I'm going to just say Yoni and, and understand that that means vagina. It's, you know, it's sacred space. Like what a wonderful way to think about your vagina as a sacred space because it is. So if you put your finger, your middle finger, in your yoni um, up to about your first or second knuckle and you press up towards the front of your body, you will uh, generally feel a, a pressure in a spot. But then if you take your finger and kind of rub back and forth, you'll feel a textured tissue. Kind of, It's kind of a little bit rough like a cat's tongue or a berry or corduroy. People describe it differently. And, um, and it will vary in size. You know, men, women, their, their G-spots are different sizes. Sometimes they're, they're quite small and other times they tend to be long. And, and the thing about the G-spot is that it does actually engorge. It becomes erect. It fills with, with fluid. And, um, and so throughout your process of arousal, like if you're just sitting here right now putting your finger in your vagina, you're probably not going to feel much. But as you become more aroused and as the G-spot becomes more engorged, you're going to have more and more sensation. And it's going to feel more and more pleasurable generally. So that is your G-spot. Now the G-spot, for many women, the back end of the G-spot is the area that is the most pleasurable. And that has to do with the, the dispersion of the, the glands in, in the actual G-spot. But um, some women find the middle area and some people find the opening. And, and I have to say from my personal experience, when I started, it was I, my G-spot was numb. Like it just didn't exist. But I actually have gone through the healing process several times, healing my G-spot several times. Times. And um, and I have gone through the process of, of having having orgasm in the back end of my G spot, the middle of my G spot, and and the front of my G spot by my vaginal opening. So, um, in my opinion, your G spot has the potential. The entire thing has the potential to be amazingly pleasurable. And I say that not just from my own experience, but the experience of of many of my students and many other women that I know. So that's two, your clitoris, your clitoral orgasms, and G-spot orgasms. Then we have A-spot orgasms. And the A-spot, this is an interesting thing that I found very recently about the A-spot. So the A-spot, um, most people describe it as, as you know, about three to four inches inside, again, on the anterior wall. Pretty, you know, just past the G-spot for the most part. Not quite at the cervix, a little bit further down from the cervix. But technically, the A spot is called the anterior fornix erogenous zone, and fornix means arch. So, one, you know, it, it's specifically defined, it's in the arch where the cervix and the anterior wall of, of the vagina meet. 
Recently, I found out that according to, I'm going to actually get the source for you right now, according to a Scandinavian researcher, uh, Zwi Hoek, uh, in, a, in a Vaginal Erotic Sensitivity by Sexological Examination, this is uh, from Naomi Wolf's book, uh, Vagina, a New Biography, um, they found that the whole anterior of the wall, wall of the vagina was sexually responsive. So everything, basically everything from your cervix to your G-spot is has the potential, I want to say has the potential, to be amazingly pleasurable. And again, you know, if, if this isn't your experience, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be. I'm not saying that there's something wrong with you if, if it isn't. But again, I'm going to share my experience and my experience with, uh, with many of my students is uh, for me initially when, when I first started exploring deeper in the vagina, deeper in my yoni, the, the A spot area, um, and my partner was exploring it. It hurt. <laughs> like it was, it was painful, and I had to go through a, a, a pretty intense process of healing because we store, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later. But we store emotional, we store emotion, emotional energy in the body, but particularly any, you know, any negative sexual messaging we've heard throughout our lives, and there's lots of it, especially for women. Um, we're going to store that energy in our in our yonis, and I've I've personally found that the deeper in the deeper in the vagina you go, uh, the more emotional energy is stored there. So um, so the A spot is actually, according to these people, is actually an a zone, more like an A zone. So everything, basically everything along the the front anterior means front uh, wall of your yoni has the potential to be uh, a, a highly erogenous zone for you and uh, leading to potentially leading to orgasm if stimulated uh, long enough. Um, also, there is the P spot, which is the posterior fornix erogenous zone. So basically, you know, up around that whole area of your cervix, like all around it, is is pleasure pleasure zone. So you know, many people just refer to that to that as the deep spot. Um, then we can also, as women, we can have anal orgasms. Many you know, anal sex is is something that is you know on the rise. I have my opinions about why it's on the rise, which we can do a whole other show about. Um, but for many women, anal sex is is fabulous. You know, if 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 approached properly, I my favorite thing about anal sex. If people ask me about it, I say start small and use lots of lube. That's you know. <laughs> So, um, so anal, anal orgasms, I've had them myself, they're amazing, you can have anal G-spot orgasm, it's mind blowing. Uh, we can have cervical orgasms, so where the cervix, we're actually having a, a, an explosion, explosive energy release of pleasure uh, from cervical stimulation specifically. We can have um, U-spot. Now, the U-spot is the urethral, uh, orgasming from stimulating the urethral opening. And, and many people believe, and I, myself included, that this is the the front end of the G-spot. So it's actually, you know, can be considered a G-spot orgasm. It's just, you know, at the actual, instead of way deep inside the body, it's more towards the opening, the vaginal opening of the body, even outside the body. But, I, you know, I personally believe, having experienced it myself, uh, often... And hearing other sex educators talk about it, that it is part of a G-spot orgasm, just a different area of the G-spot. Uh, we can have orgasms from having our nipples stimulated. We can have whole body orgasms. We can have energy orgasms. So that's a big thing that people are talking about. So it's the hands-free orgasm. So orgasming just from uh, flexing, contracting, and releasing your pelvic floor muscles and breathing uh, can induce orgasm. And um, there are many women that uh, find the perineum especially pleasurable. Uh, they're spongy. The perineum contains a, like a diamond, uh, I believe a diamond shape of spongy erectile tissue that many, many women find highly pleasurable to have directly stimulated. So uh, as you can see, we have... I like to call it an orgasm buffet. We have, you know, this variety, this amazing variety of orgasmic pleasure that we can experience. And yet statistics show that, you know, and they'll differ, but statistics show that anywhere from 40 to 70 percent of women are not having the kind of orgasms that they would like to. And some of them are just, you know, completely non-orgasmic. And, and again, if, if this is your experience, I just want to share with you that there's nothing wrong with you whatsoever. Um, 
again, if we are not having the sexual experience we want, it's usually because um, there's something in the way. Uh, orgasm is a natural function of the body. It's kind of like, you know, there's some people that say, oh, well, you shouldn't focus so much on orgasm, and, you know, it's all right for women to have, not have orgasms. Yes, it's okay to not have orgasms, but if men weren't having orgasms, we would call out the National Guard. We would want to find out why aren't men having orgasms. So if you're a woman and you're not having orgasms, there's usually a reason for it. Another disclaimer, I, I want to put out there is there I, there are some people that um, are non-orgasmic as a result of some type of um, nerve damage or pressure on the spine. I know that was Naomi Wolf's experience when she wrote the book. Uh, if you haven't read this book, I think it's amazing. Some people don't like it, but I love it. Um, uh, it's called Vagina, a New Biography by Naomi Wolf. I, it's amazing. I refer to it often in my own book. Um, so... If, if there is a medically diagnosed reason, such as a spinal injury or a nerve issue or something, um, you know, that some of the methods that I share uh, may help, but, um, but I'm, I'm not talking about that when I say that there are three main reasons that, that most women are, are and men are not experiencing their full pleasure potential. Um, in my experience with my own self and as an instructor, these are the, the top three things that I've seen pop up. Um, that are blocking us from, uh, from our full pleasure potential, our full orgasmic ability. And so those three reasons are, number one is a lack of education. So, um, as I said, the, the sex education that we receive in this culture is, is not actually sex education. And I found out uh, within the last, I mean, for me, when I first started studying Tantra, I found out that it could take a woman anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes before her body was ready to have, you know, vaginal orgasms. And if you think of most people's sexual experience, the average time of sexual penetration, not including foreplay, but actual sexual penetration, penis and vagina, uh, is two to seven minutes. Um, and if you're not, you know, if you're not in a heterosexual relationship, even same sex relationships, <laughs> the sex tends to be, tends, it tends to be modeled, quite frankly, after heterosexual sex, which is, you know, fast and furious, get her done. Um, so many women, we're, we're, it's simply a matter of time. Um, we simply don't have enough time. And, and there's an actual ana an anatomical reason that it can take anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes. And it's because um, we have, women have as much erectile tissue internally as a man has externally. So if you think of a, a penis and turn it inside out, um, that's kind of what's going on inside of our bodies. We have this network, this amazing network of erectile tissue inside. And if you, you know, I think there, Sherry Winston published a book called uh, Women's Anatomy of Arousal that actually has color pictures and, and describes it. It's amazing to know what's going on inside there. Um, and so we, we, it takes us a while to heat up to full capacity. Now that obviously doesn't mean that you can't have an orgasm, you know, before 20 minutes. It's, it's, that's not what we're saying, but for us to reach our full arousal, like a, like full peak of arousal, um, it, it simply takes time. Um, and so there's a discrepancy between what go, what our timing for arousal and, and for men. And as I said, the average time of penetration until ejaculation for men is, is two to seven minutes, sometimes 10. And that just simply isn't enough time, even including foreplay for many people, which only lasts about, you know, five 10 minutes maybe that's still not enough time for us to reach our peak so by understanding more about our bodies and the way they work we can bridge the gap so to speak and we can understand to slow things down and you know and and sex doesn't have to happen it, 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 not every sexual experience has to be a quickie <laughs> you know we can take our time we can we can allow the entire body to become aroused we can um do things like vulva massage and really you know vulva massage acts to increase the blood flow and the circulation obviously in the organs so that it speeds up that process of arousal um and um yeah, so, so when you are educated, when we are educated as, as human beings about the way our bodies work and the way our sexual anatomy works the best, then we can implement tools to, to, uh, to address that. The second reason is uh, lack of awareness. 
And I want to say lack of presence, being present in your body. So I want you to think about the last time you had an orgasm. Were you thinking about anything else? Probably not. <laughs> That's kind of the whole point of having an orgasm. You cannot have an orgasm and be thinking about doing the dishes, right? So um, you certainly cannot have multiple, be multi-orgasmic and start thinking about, and be thinking about doing the dishes or what you're making for dinner, right? So uh, orgasm is a one-pointed event. It is one-pointed focus and one-pointed concentration on pleasure. So for many of us, especially women, again, it takes us a while to get out of our heads and into our bodies, men too. And so by slowing sex down, by using methods to help get present in your body so that you're aware of your body, you're able to actually, you know, often uh, for women, we also we also have a lot of... Um, body image issues that may come up and we may be telling ourselves stories about the way we smell, we may feel emotionally uncomfortable or embarrassed or that sort of thing. So all of those things are going to impede your ability to be fully present in the body. Another thing that I that I like to remind people of is if we're not present in our everyday life, and present means, you know, again, being focused on what you're doing on the moment, um, if we're not present in our everyday life, why would we expect ourselves to be present during sex? You know, it's being present as a habit. It's forming a new habit. And so the best place to practice is outside of the bedroom <laughs> so that when you do get to the bedroom, you're not trying to catch up. So a uh, really great um, way, so great, how do you get more present? So having a daily meditation practice. Um, and for me, you know, the simplest, most profound, uh, transformative meditation practice is really just sitting and doing some deep breathing. You, again, when you're focusing on your breath, you're not focusing on anything else, chances are. So really feeling, taking the time and your awareness to really just something so simple, feel your breathing process, feel the process of your body expanding, bringing in air, bringing in life force, and then letting it go, feeling that expansion and that contraction, breathing deeply, deeply into it, and there you go. You're present. It's amazing. It's amazing how simple that is. So practicing that several times throughout the day, and then also taking the time to do that before sex, whether it's with yourself or your partner. My my students, you know, they meditate before they masturbate. <laughs> Meditate before you masturbate. That's great. So um, so that's number two. Uh, number three is going to be lack of sensation. So... I don't. I, I do. I do think I share this. We store emotional. We store emotional energy in the body. Sometimes it's trauma. Sometimes it's stress. Sometimes it's you know just ooh, just like emotional tension, emotional stress. I call it. Um, but we will store that in the body. So what causes emotional? Stress. What would cause a lack of sensation? So I, I actually have have a list here uh, that's from my book of some emotional traumas or stresses, just so you can kind of get an idea of how vast and varied are the things that may cause our bodies to hold this energy and impede our ability to fully experience pleasure. Um, so number one is any kind of um, religious guilt, fear, and shame. So receiving the message from the time you're a little child that uh, that your sex uh, is separate from the rest of you and that it's something dirty and wrong and you know you should feel ashamed of it, uh, that's a sexual trauma. It's a psychological emotional trauma. Um, being told as a child that touching your genitals is wrong, bad, or dirty. I think, you know, 99% of the people on this planet can probably identify with that. You don't remember it. I can guarantee you do not remember <laughs> when you were a little toddler and someone saying, don't touch your penis, don't, when somebody telling you that it was wrong to touch your genitals and especially to feel pleasure. We don't remember it, most of us. Um, and and at the time it happened, we had no frame of reference. We had no no ability to to rationalize the experience or anything. We just received this intense, um, often scary, sometimes violent emotional imprint that touching ourselves and feeling pleasure from it was wrong and dirty and shameful. Um, being called a slut, um, 
being told that uh, if you're homosexual, being told that your sexual preference and your sexual expression is wrong, that is a sexual trauma that will create sexual stress and tension in your body. Um, negative uh, self images, uh, saying too fat, too skinny, too ugly. Um, uh, your partner withdrawing emotionally after having sex. So these are these are just some of the the ways uh, in which uh, emotional stress emotional tension will be stored in the genital tissues. So um, I see we're getting close to, uh, to, to being out of time. So I want to give you some solutions for all this. We give you a lot of why and what. So I, I'd like to give you some, some solutions of, of how to start transforming this. So the first is, is to get educated. And part of that is, is listening, <laughs> understanding more about your sexuality, listening to this radio show, uh, getting, uh, expanding your horizons, getting different views, exploring, becoming aware. Uh, that's, that's a first step. Uh, transforming your mind, transforming your consciousness will help you trans transform your relationship to your sexuality. Um, number two is, like I said, start getting present in your body. That's huge. You have to be present in your body to understand your body and to be able to respond to the impulses that it gives us. So uh, developing some sort of practice, whatever it is, whether it's meditation or yoga or whatever it is to, to help you start developing a deeper connection and deeper relationship to your body. Um, and and I would encourage you to to actually start learning some some techniques. You know, there's a lot to be said for for method. You know, if you want to become a great cook, you don't just overnight become a great cook. You actually have to at least read a book um, or even take a class and and learn the skills, learn the methods, learn the technique uh, to be to becoming a master or if not a master, at least a better a better cook. So uh, your home play, your home play exercise that I have for us this week and I want I want to I'm going to check in. I'm going to tell you about it on a, again on the Better Love and Sex Facebook page. I want, I'm going to share my experience throughout the week, but I'd love for you to share your experience with me too because I love to find out how how this stuff works for other people. So this is a really simple one. This is just, I'm going to invite you to think of your pleasure on a scale from one to 10. And we're just going to focus on physical pleasure. So throughout the week, when you're sitting down specifically, I want you to become aware of your body and how it feels. Are you comfortable in the position that you're in? Are you in pain in any area of your body? You know, and where are you at on a scale from one to 10? So most of us will just suffer through being uncomfortable for long periods of time. And this again creates tension in the body. Um, so wherever you are, whatever you're doing at various times throughout the day, specifically when you're sitting, I want you to check in and feel your body and notice how it feels. Notice where you're at on that scale from one to 10. And if you're at like a six, like, okay, you know, I'm at about a six. My back could use more support. I'm going to invite you to do whatever it's going to take to make that experience a 10 or as close to a 10 as possible. So if getting another pillow, you know, having more cushion under your butt, changing positions, having something to support your back, whatever it is to give yourself as much pleasure in that moment as possible, I'm going to invite you to do that. And very, very simple exercise, but just learning to become comfortable just throughout the day is going to also help you become more comfortable and more aware of your body during sex. So again, thank you so much. How exciting. So glad to have you. I look forward to having you back next week. And I look forward to this journey of, of sexual healing, awakening, transformation, and helping you have, helping all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Helping all of us have more love and better sex and just a better life.